Hello colleagues. I'm sorry not to be able to join you at this uh, workshop today, uh, but I think it's a really terrific topic that you're discussing and I hope there are some good outcomes. Um, I wanted to give you uh, a brief presentation uh, on a few ideas which derive from a paper that I wrote back in 2009 um, regarding advocacy at the national level. And while that paper is now five years old, I think many of the messages uh, from that time are still relevant, perhaps even more so. Um, in a crude way, we might chop up the topic of advocacy into three parts and talk about the priority for advocacy, um, the content, and lastly, the techniques used. And I think um, for organisations working at a national level in heritage conservation in Australia, I think there are challenges, if not problems, in all those areas. Um, firstly, with regard to priority, um, well, I think many organisations might say that they give a high priority to advocacy, but I think in reality, when you look at what people actually do, uh, what organisations actually do, um, the priority is effectively pretty low for a whole series of good and other reasons. Um, with regard to the content of advocacy work, um, I think the problem for many organisations is that um, they don't have uh, a well worked out consolidated list of wishes, desires, dreams for heritage conservation that they can use to respond to governments and others quickly um, when the phone call comes from Greg Hunt or Mark Butler. Um, asking uh, for organisations' priorities. Um, no doubt, with a little bit of thought, quite a reasonable list of wishes can be developed, but really what we need is that list to be um, ready, prepared and able to be used right now. Um, and there is no shortage of good ideas that um, uh, could be put forward for heritage conservation, of course. Um, with regard to techniques, um, in the past organisations at a national level have been able to you know, fire off a letter or two, um, have a meeting, perhaps provide a short report um, and maybe even occasionally issue the odd press release. Um, but these are really uh, a limited, a basic set of techniques which um, can get used in advocacy. You know, there are others um, which uh, might be more and less effective um, so we need to think broadly about how we might um, convey messages and persuade people to uh, uh, adopt the good measures that we want to see adopted. Um, but perhaps more importantly um, the point I want to raise is that um, these techniques used in the past have tended to be one-off occasions, you know, the one-off letter, the one-off meeting. And what we really need to be able to do is to campaign, to be able to play the long game, because persuading people to make big changes, to devote big resources to Australia's heritage conservation is not something you're likely to be able to achieve um, with a single meeting or with a single letter. Um, we need to be able to campaign over the long term. And sort of in this same context, it's worth reflecting that, as far as I'm aware, at the national level in historic heritage conservation, cultural heritage conservation, there is not a single person working full time or in a voluntary capacity as a lobbyist for our sector. There used to be such people, but that's no longer the case. And in any event, in the past, they've only been um, very few in number, perhaps singular in number. Um, if we look across the fence at the uh, nature conservation organisations, the green groups, um, they tend to have um, full-time campaigners working at a national level um, on these sorts of issues, on the issues of concern to them. Um, and if we want to uh, achieve as much as they achieve, then um, you know, we'd need to put in the same uh, resources, the same commitment, uh, the same full-time campaigners um, to run these issues. Um, let me finish off by reflecting on the possible role of Australia ICOMOS um, in this field. 
and we are in member number terms, the smallest of the groups compared to say the Federation of Historical Societies or the National Trust Movement. Um, and I don't think we should necessarily expect to be uh, at the uh, front of every campaign, organising every campaign and running every campaign and fronting every campaign. I think that's probably unrealistic. But we might play a niche role, um, partly as the generator of ideas, um, but partly also perhaps as the ginger group to try and encourage others who have more resources um, to take on some of the other tasks that perhaps Australia Ricamos cannot itself undertake. So Australia Ricamos perhaps needs to think carefully about what key role it can play with regard to advocacy, which is not trying to do everything. That's all I had to say. Again, hopefully there are some positive outcomes from this workshop and I wish you all well. Good afternoon.